everybody. Well, today we're going to be starting a video series on sheet metal. Um, it's not going to be a video series about how to install um, sheet metal trunk lines, like if you're working in a high-rise building or something like that. That's not what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about field fabricated sheet metal um, and what to do when you come across a furnace change out or an evaporator coil change out where the old furnace was wider or smaller and you're going to wider or smaller and uh, we're going to be doing the um, how to make transitions and make everything look right and on those jobs when you do do a uh, evaporator change out when you got holes that are like this and instead of taking a piece of sheet metal and making it look right um, you use tape. Um, I've gotten a lot of uh, response on some of the videos I do about the sheet metal work um, saying they wish they knew how to do it like I do and it's not really a complicated thing it's actually pretty easy but uh, the problem is a lot of guys when they start off in the field are never taught or they're never taught correctly um, they do not teach this in a school any air conditioning school you go to they don't teach it and um, and if you do learn it on the field out in the field a lot of times the guys that are teaching you they don't know how to do it themselves so I hope by the end of this video series uh, you have a grasp on uh, how to properly do sheet metal work in the field. Uh, I'm going to do my best to show you how to do it and um, hope you learn something from it. But today, this is this is going to be um, just the sheet metal tools. What's inside my toolbox, what I use um, to do the job. Now my tools may be a little different from yours, and um, uh, but the best part about being in the field, a lot of times I make things work. Um, and, and don't use a tool for it um, and you'll understand as we go through the series what I'm talking about so I'm gonna pull out every tool out of my toolbox and we're gonna talk about it I'm not gonna show how it's used right now we'll wait for the uh, for that particular video to show how it's used but just so when I do do that video you'll know what it is so if you're watching um, the beginning so anyway, let's get started and uh, see what's in the toolbox. Alright, first thing we're going to start off with are the reds. The red uh, right-handed snips. I use the brand called Midwest. Um, you can see they're Midwest uh, and they're offsets. Um, Home Depot actually now has started carrying these snips. They used to carry a brand called Wiss or um, Malco. Well, even Malco is supposed to be a, a sheet metal friendly uh, company, but I do not use their snips because they are not very good. I prefer the offsets because I can cut uh, a pretty good distance across a uh, piece of sheet metal. So anyway, so that's the reds. They cut to the right like that. Alright, <clears throat> that's pretty much the only snips that I use. And I actually have two sets of them. One, two. Um, as you can see, these are, I don't know how old these are, but, but I do replace them every once in a while. I don't keep the same snips for, for a long time. Um, so anyway, so that's the, that's the snips. The next one I have is the greens. These are for cutting the opposite direction. Now, when you're using snips, you see from the jaws, the metal would slide in here. And then as you cut like that, the metal goes up. Well, if you remember, if you keep one rule in mind, you'll always remember, you'll always know what um, which pair of snips to use. If you remember that the trash goes up, meaning what you're not going to use always goes up, 
then you'll know how to which which set of snips to use. Um, I hardly use the greens. Matter of fact, I can't think of the last time I did use greens, but that's the greens. Um, <clears throat> of course, you got your knife. This sheet metal, well, it's not a sheet metal knife, but it's to cut insulation. Um, see, it's, this one's to cut duckboard, really. You see, it's got a serrated edge on it. Um, you can cut flex with it, uh, but I have this knife here. Um, so that's the knife. Um, I've got another type of knife, and this is actually a uh, flex knife. You open it up. I actually had to get a new one because, because uh, as you're cutting the flex, this little jaw, you get that wire and squeeze on that wire. So that's a flex knife. Uh, so even though it's not sheet metal, sheet metal, you still need it. So I keep it in my sheet metal box. Uh, Next thing we have is the folding tongs. That's what I call them. People call them different things, but I call them folding tongs. Um, you see the bill, you stick the metal in there and you bend it. Uh, these come in several different types. Um, you got some that are wider. Uh, then you have some that are offset, actually, to where if you're working above your head and you, um, if you're working above your head, you can bend it like that. So, very good tool to have. It's a must to have, actually, if you're going to do sheet metal work. Um, another important tool to have is a long screwdriver to where you can beat on a duck with the hammer. Um, that's all I use this for, and the pry. Um, <clears throat> but I just take the, uh, the hammer's not in the box, but I take the hammer here and Smack it. I can start a hole and then fit my snips into it. So, hammer is another good thing to have in your sheet metal. Um, don't know why these are in there, but these are the strap gun tools. <clears throat> uh, this is a really good tool to have the hole cutter. And as you can see, it's got different numbers and you loosen this nut up right here and you can slide this in and it'll give you your uh, if you wanted to cut a six inch duck you put the this little mark right here on the six inch part right there and that'll make this three inches from here to here and you put it in your drill like that and uh, anyway so we'll get to that when we get to that video uh, the most important tool you're going to need is a tape measure. You can't use any of the other tools without the tape measure. So, I would have two of these. One that you carry around and one that you leave in your sheet metal box. So, you can use the same one, but uh, uh, best to have two. The best part, and the bigger the better, because the best part about a tape measure is you can turn this around and as if you can see uh, on the back of the tape measure there's probably some marks like right there's a mark um, see that black mark there and uh, I use this for a straight edge lay it across the duct draw a line across and um, um, so tape measure does more than one thing uh, these are nibblers hook into your drill and uh, tighten it up and it's the best tool you can have for cutting the side of the furnace out. I for many many years used my red offset snip to cut out the side of a furnace and sometimes I still do because I'm just hard headed like that you know but the notchers or the nibblers actually work really 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 good um, so a must have a must have in the toolbox um, I keep this little drill bit along for the hole cutter 
because you need really really need a sharp tool uh, drill bit when you're using this uh, let's see pipe crimpers a lot of people use their needle nose pliers and needle nose really needle nose pliers work but not as good as the uh, pipe crimpers so um, a must have let's see what else uh, I have a long extension in there for um, to put your quarter inch chuck or your 5 sixteenths chuck in there and it just extends it out I actually don't know why it's in that sheet metal box but uh, at least I know where it's at <clears throat> uh, a level little torpedo level I got this one for free at a Goodman meeting a Goodman factory uh, meeting they had a bunch of them laying on the table so um, I actually got a couple of them it's magnetic so um, good torpedo level to have uh, got another hole cutter um, don't know why I got two of them but I do this one's actually got a broken bit another good reason you need to have a uh, spare bit in your toolbox and the last thing in my toolbox is a piece of vest lock and usually it's not in the toolbox but I just cut it while I go just to show you um, this isn't really a tool that you would buy at a uh, supply house um, because they actually sell a folding tool and that's what I use the S-Lock for is to fold my flanges on my ductwork or transitions or whatever uh, I just don't see a point in spending the money to buy a folding tool um, when I get this for free well not really free but uh, when I'm buying when I know I'm going to be making a transition I always buy S-Lock now people in different parts of the country <clears throat> I've heard this called S-Cleat -S S-Lock and something else I think but um, I call it S-Lock everybody here calls it S-Lock I think the northern part of the country calls this S-Cleat but anyway so that's all <clears throat> that's what's in my toolbox and I don't really see a point in adding anything else because <clears throat> I um, remember I am a filled sheet metal guy and I'm not out doing a bunch of duct work um, if you are doing duct work then there's other tools you'll have like duct stretchers and that kind of stuff but but uh, um, Oh yeah, one other thing I forgot. Unibit. Unibit is very important for when you're using the uh, uh, the nibbler to hook, hook to your drill. Instead of beating a hole in the side of the furnace, you use a unibit and uh, drill a hole. You see it comes in different sizes um, from quarter inch all the way up. Um, this one I forget what it goes to but three quarter inch I think yeah it goes to three quarter inch good for uh, for doing that that's what I use it for or if I'm working on the air handler and need to run power in it uh, and the power the knockouts for the power are in the wrong spot I just drill me a new hole so very, very important tool to have and you can get these anywhere from $35 to $75 uh, depending on where you buy it from uh, I know Harbor Freight sells them for pretty cheap. Um, supply houses are going to be really expensive. I've seen some of them go for as much as 90 bucks. But it's a great tool to have. Um, and if you can keep it in your toolbox and not leave it somewhere, it'll last for a long time. So anyway, so that's my that's what's in my toolbox. Uh, the thing that stays on the top of the toolbox the most, of course, is my red snips I am just a uh, red snip guy uh, and so that's what I'm going to continue to use every once in a while I'm right handed and it's just awkward for me to use the greens um, I know people can't do without the greens but, but I can um, and like I said just because I do it one way doesn't necessarily mean that's the right way but it is my way and it works for me so um, 
I hope that this video series is going to be good for you. And like I said, because I have gotten several comments about, I wish you would do some more sheet metal videos. And so, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't know how many it's going to take because we cannot, this stuff cannot be taught in a uh, 15 minute video. It just can't. So it's going to have to be spread out through several, several videos. And um, um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy them. And I'll do my best to keep the ums and the ohs out of it. But, you know, I'm not scrapped. This thing is not scripted, so we're going to do the best we can. And I hope you just hang out with me and uh, learn something from it. And if you do do this for a living, uh, please keep the comments to yourself. This is not about you and what you know. This is about what people don't know and trying to teach them how to do it. So if you see something that I do, Please make a comment about it, how you would do it differently. But if you dog me out about it, well, dude, I'm sorry. I've been doing it for a long time, and I have some pretty good-looking stuff out there. So uh, um, please keep your comments to yourself. Thanks, and have a great day. And I hope you enjoy the, the series.